All right, so hello out there. Uh, hi, Levi. Uh, hope you're ready for today's lesson. Today we're going to be doing a height map uh, using Render to Texture from 3D Studio Max 2020 student, student Edition. And we'll hop in the front view. I'm going to make a, a flat plane. And this will represent our low poly. And I say that because this is, would be the same process if you're baking to any low poly geometry. In this case, it's just a plane. And convert to edit poly just out of habit. Now I'm going to I'll use a teapot mesh. This will represent our high poly geometry or whatever you want the height map uh, information to be derived from. And we'll position this um, in front of the plane at whatever orientation you want the texture to be. So if the teapot's in the middle, it'll be in the middle of the texture. Now the one thing we want to um, kind of be aware of and this is might be what you had trouble with in your endeavor is the distance it is from the plane we just want to make sure we know roughly what that is so on the Y axis this is about 20 units from the plane geometry so we'll use that to dial in the clamp range uh, 22 so we'll, we'll maybe say 30 is our max distance when we use uh, render to texture. So with the plane selected, we'll go to rendering, render to texture, and this menu can be intimidating, but there's only a really a few things we need to change. So we enable projection mapping, and we want to click pick, and this is where we pick all our high poly information. And from here, if you look in your Modify tab, you'll notice we have a cage uh, represented by the blue outline. That's how far the uh, software will search uh, for the information to be included in the height map. And if we go into Options here, you'll notice a min and max height uh, under height map settings. So min, I think we uh, we don't need to go on the other side of the plane in this case. In your file, you might. Um, but max, uh, it was about, we'll say 30. So it'll search 30 units out for height map information. And that's really all we need to do in the height map settings here. Padding, if you want any kind of bleed around the edge of the height map, you can leave that or you can take it out doesn't really matter um, usually that's more important for game development for mip mapping so we'll go to add uh, this is where we add our output and we search for height map we'll add elements and I think I'll, I'll use a PNG that way you get an automatic transparency um, we'll just do a 512 and we'll specify where we're saving it to. We'll do desktop. I often find saving to the desktop creates a easy access to the file, which will be helpful for you. And that should be about it. So we go click render. Now we will have an error by default. And we look at the error message and it uh, says it's not supported uh, by, by the Arnold renderer. So we'll need to go into our render settings. By default, the new Max uses Arnold. So we'll go back to the scanline renderer. And changing that should fix this error. Now this isn't our height map, but this gives us an idea that something actually happened. If it's in the right orientation, then it means our default UVs are fine. Um, and it should save. So let's go into Photoshop and we'll find our height plane. And it's this one right here. And there we go. There's our 16-bit uh, height map. We chose 16-bit uh, because it'll actually come into play. It'll create a smoother transition. Um, 
when you're using it. I don't know if it, how much of an effect that'll have in Octane, but like in ZBrush, if you don't do 16-bit, it'll be really blocky uh, up close, kind of like Minecraft. So yeah, I hope that I hope that helps you and gets you through some of your the frustrations you're having with height maps and max. And God bless. <laughs>